right now on five on your side at 10. Slightly above average temperatures as summer officially arrives this week. I'm tracking our next best chance for rain and storms. Bud Light to throne. But is America's new top brew all in the family, the AB InBev family? We verify. Our top story, a young life lost to violence. It's hard, man. Especially losing your last born. Tonight, the father of the teen killed in a mass shooting at a downtown party is talking only with five on your side. Good evening, I'm Mike Bush and all red has the night off. The images of the violence and the aftermath are disturbing and difficult to watch. Early yesterday morning, one teen was killed, 11 others injured after gunfire rang out during a party being held at an office building on Washington Avenue. We have live team coverage tonight. Laura Barczewski talked with downtown residents and businesses about solutions to youth violence. But let's start with Robert Townsend, who spoke exclusively with the father and sister of the teen killed in the shooting. Robert's live downtown where the shooting happened. Robert. Mike, Mikhail Moore's father is really with shock, sadness, and grief. He still cannot believe his son was killed at a party. It was the worst Father's Day of Daryl Moore's life. I feel numb, man. That's, I don't know what to feel. Early Sunday morning, he got a heart-gripping phone call. My daughter called me about 2.15 and said, Daddy, uh... Wake up, we need to go check on KO. The worried dad rushed to 14th and Washington Avenue in downtown St. Louis and learned his 17-year-old son, Mikhail Moore, had been shot and killed while at a party. I'm shocked, just crazy. One minute I'm talking to him, next minute he gone. You know, just the senseless gun violence. Police say this senseless gun violence broke out around 1 a.m. Sunday on the fifth floor of an office building. Startling surveillance images show dozens of terrified teenagers ran for their lives when the gunfire popped off. Mikhail died at the scene. He was the youngest of 13 and a junior at Sumner High School. It's hard, man, especially losing your last born. You know, I thought he going to outlive us all. He was caring, he was loving, like he was everything. He was a good uncle and a great brother. 11 others ranging from 15 to 19 were injured. Survivors told police conflicting stories. Some said a group of men in all black just started shooting. Others claimed two groups were apparently arguing before shooting at each other. I just want justice for my son. A grief-stricken dad who must now bury his son. It's just senseless, man. And, you know, like, I agree with what the mayor is saying. We need to find something to save these kids. And Moore now regrets letting his son go to that party. Police have arrested a 17-year-old male suspect in connection with this deadly shooting. And tonight they are still looking for several others. Live downtown, Robert Townsend, five on your side. And five on your side has obtained this surveillance photo showing multiple people bringing guns into the building. Police sources say some of the survivors told them the party was advertised on Instagram and guns and purses were not supposed to be allowed. We're also told seven of the surviving victims come from St. Louis, the remaining coming from St. Louis County. Downtown residents are tired of the violence happening outside their windows. Whether it's a stronger curfew or some kind of law change, they say something has to change. Our Laura Barczewski continues our live team coverage. She talked with the people living amongst the chaos. Laura. Mike, residents and business owners told me this afternoon they are just exhausted after this continued violence. Business owners didn't even want to go on camera because of how it's affecting them. But residents did, saying police alone are not the only ones who can change this. Jordan lives on Washington Avenue, close to the office building where almost a dozen teens were injured and one was killed during a shooting. It's uh, sad that it came to that, but it's kind of where it's at. This is nothing new. One day people are coming out to leave at like 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night, and there's just armed teenagers in our lobby. You know, it's just a large band of armed, I mean, kids. And you know, yeah, what, what do you do at that point? But something has to change. St. Louis police say they're doing what they can by increasing their presence downtown and enforcing the curfews. So if it takes us, you know, 
uh, detaining these juveniles, inconveniencing parents or guardians to have to come and physically pick them up and then on top of that potentially be issued a summons where they have to deal with the city councilor's office and potential fines. Um, I mean, that's how serious this is. Arnold Stricker with Citizens for a Greater Downtown St. Louis says he's noticed more officers on the streets. We appreciate what the chief is doing as it relates to that. Uh, you know, more about that is uh, they're trying to curb some of these things, and maybe that's why he mentioned some of these things have moved inside because they're dealing with the things that are going on outside. Jordan thinks the curfew enforcement isn't enough. Really, I think we just need to crack down on parents. I mean, it's kind of like if my dog got off the leash and he ran across the street and bit somebody, I'd be financially liable for any damage that was done there. Stricker says some bills currently in front of the Board of Aldermen are part of the solution, but they need to be stronger. It needs to go back to leadership taking some really progressive kinds of action in including law enforcement in their solutions and including not watering down things that we already have. The city is working to have several rec centers, the Wall and Marquette rec centers, open later on Fridays and Saturdays. That would be 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. for kids. 15 and under and 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. for people 16 and up. That would go all the way through August, so they have somewhere to go. Reporting live from downtown St. Louis, Laura Barcheski, 5 on your side. One solution to large parties in downtown is to regulate short-term rentals. Tomorrow morning, St. Louis Board of Aldermen Committee will discuss a board bill. That's Board Bill 33. It would require a permit to operate a short-term rental in the city. Police Chief Robert Tracy is pleading with Missouri lawmakers to create laws to prevent juveniles from carrying guns out in public. Congresswoman Cori Bush is pointing fingers at Republicans in Jefferson City calling for gun laws but said this is about enforcement. I don't believe that police should go around trying to stop people and trying to take guns from people. That is not because we have enough problems with stop and frisk in this country and so it can easily turn into something we do not want. I think that she's not trying to actually solve the problem. If you look at what happened in the city of New York, which can be a great example for how you should do things, stop and frisk saved lives. The Federal Youth Handgun Safety Act prohibits unsupervised minors from possessing a handgun or bullets, but Missouri Republicans passed a law to sue police if they try to enforce federal laws or partner with federal law enforcement here. Tonight, six teenagers in Milwaukee, Wisconsin are recovering after a shooting during a Juneteenth celebration. The five victims range in age from 14 to 19. The suspected 17-year-old gunman was also injured. Police say the shooting stemmed from a fight between several young women. A live look at downtown St. Louis tonight. An air quality alert lapsed about two hours ago, but we're going to be under an air quality alert tomorrow. Meteorologist Jim Castillo is in for Scott tonight, and he joins us now with that weather first forecast. Yes, you know, another one, Mike. So again, about 10 a.m. until 8 p.m. And just checking that current air quality right now, uh, when you get into the green, that's good. When you have yellow, it's more moderate air quality, and most of the area is underneath that right now. But look at the orange, even down around Park Hills and Farmington, and that is unhealthy for sensitive groups even at this hour. So that air quality alert, again orange tomorrow, mainly the metro, but even back into Franklin County, and we'll be watching that. Wouldn't be surprised if we have this all week long. It is pleasant tonight outside of that air quality, and that air quality alert again begins at 10 a.m. tomorrow, but the rain chances, they do ramp up again for the weekend. I'll time it out for you coming up. All right, Jim. Tonight, Ferguson police are investigating a homicide. About two and a half hours ago, officers were called to Cooper Creek Road. That's off Canfield and West Florissant. We're working to get more information from police on exactly what happened. A St. Louis County jury has convicted a man for the shooting deaths of a utility worker and another man. Lanell Lewis Jones was found guilty of two counts of second degree murder. Police say he opened fire on a car in Berkeley back in February 2018, killing William Dortch, who was inside. A stray bullet flew about half a block before hitting Frank Langston. The 55 year old was making a delivery at an MSD work site. Langston will be sentenced in August. The Bud Light backlash has led to a new top selling beer in the U.S. Tonight, our Verify team is looking into whether America's new top brew is also made by AB InBev. Here's Brandon Lewis. 
Some people have boycotted Bud Light since it brewed controversy by partnering with a social media influencer who is transgender earlier this year. Now, one Nielsen estimate shows Modelo surpassed Bud Light in the percentage of U.S. beer sales for the first time in a decade. While some social media users claim it's proof the boycott is working, others say it's not because Modelo and Bud Light are owned by the same company. Let's verify. Are Modelo and Bud Light actually owned by the same company in the U.S.? Our sources are Anheuser-Busch InBev, Constellation Brands, and the U.S. Department of Justice. In 2012, Bud Light owner AB InBev announced a deal to buy Grupo Modelo, the owner of Modelo Beer. Before the sale was completed, the Justice Department filed an antitrust lawsuit against the $20 billion purchase over concerns it would substantially lessen competition. In April 2013, a settlement was reached, allowing the sale to go through if AB InBev sold Modelo's entire U.S. business to another company, Constellation Brands. The agreement allowed AB InBev to sell Modelo elsewhere around the world, but not in the U.S. So, no, Modelo and Bud Light are not owned by the same company in the U.S. Constellation also sells Corona and Pacifico beer in the U.S., even though those brands are sold by AB InBev in other countries. With or verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. What would you like us to verify? Just send an email to verify at ksdk.com. Well, today is Juneteenth. It marks the second year of the federal holiday that commemorates the end of slavery in the United States, and celebrations were held across the country and here in St. Louis. Tonight, the NAACP of St. Louis County held its 86th annual Freedom Fund Dinner. It's the nonprofit's largest fundraiser. The money raised goes towards youth programs, financial literacy courses, civic engagement, equity, and environmental justice. And hundreds of people lined West Florissant this afternoon for the second annual Delwood Juneteenth celebration. In addition to the parade, there were vendors and a number of community resources available to help those in need. Lost in the Atlantic. Tonight, the frantic search for a submersible carrying a group of tourists to the wreckage of the Titanic. During the course of the dive, they lost communication. The limited vital supplies left on board. Avoiding summer travel turbulence. Tonight, a new survey reveals which airlines are more likely to get you to your destination on time and stress-free. The majority of the week will be dry and warm. Plus, I'll time out who may see isolated storms and our next best chance of widespread rain in the 10-day forecast.